So have you ever heard of chocolate chest pie? More importantly, have you ever tasted chocolate chest pie? If not, you really need to. Let me break it down for you. So the way this bakes up is on top, you're left with this thin, crispy, brittle layer of chocolate pavement. The texture is just sensational. Now under that, there's a thick layer of something like a chocolate truffle or the best moist brownie you've ever tried. And under all that is your own homemade flaky crust. And don't worry if you don't have a favorite crust, you can download my favorite recipe at the link below. So how about we make a chocolate chest pie? But first, if we haven't met already, I'm Ken Hadrick, the Dean of the Pie Academy and author of the book of the same name. We celebrate all pies at thepieacademy.com, sweet and savory, with recipes and videos like these and live online classes that we hold several times a month. Now, if you're watching this video on YouTube, I hope you'll give it a big thumbs up and subscribe to our channel as well. Hit that notifications bell while you're at it. So go ahead and make the dough and let it chill in the refrigerator for a little bit, then roll it into a circle that's a little bigger than 12 inches in diameter. Now you don't have to do this, but I like to trim it up with a 12 inch template to make the circle nice and even. Now go ahead and line a standard nine and a half inch pie pan with it. Standard pans like this Pyrex one are about one and a quarter inches high. Now a deep dish pan like this one can be a lot deeper. It's great for a fruit pie, but not really what we want here. Do a simple crimp along the edge with a fork, and while you're at it, poke the bottom of the pastry seven or eight times. Then refrigerate your pastry for 30 minutes before you partially bake it. Now to do that, to partially bake it, preheat the oven to 350 degrees. Line the pastry with foil so that it fits like a glove and then weigh it down with a pound or more of dry beans. Bank the beans up the sides to hold those in place too. Now bake the shell on the middle shelf of your oven for about 30 minutes. Then remove the foil and beans and put the shell back in the oven for 10 minutes, just long enough to get a light golden edge and a crusty dry bottom. Cool the crust, then plug those holes with a smear of cream cheese. If you don't plug those holes, the, the filling could leak through them and make a real mess of things. Now the filling is very simple and takes just a few minutes to mix up. Combine the sugar, the cornmeal, and the salt in a large bowl. The cornmeal helps to thicken the filling and you find it in a lot of chess pie recipes. It's kind of a southern thing. Add the eggs, the egg yolk, the milk, and the vanilla and whisk well. Now, set that aside and melt a stick of butter with four ounces of bittersweet chocolate over very low heat. When the chocolate is melted, whisk it out to smooth it and then whisk the melted chocolate into the egg mixture. Now put your partially baked shell on a baking sheet, pour in the filling, and then bake on the center rack at 325 degrees for about 50 minutes. I like to turn the sheet 180 degrees about midway through the baking so the pie bakes evenly. I think that helps because the, the back of our ovens tends to be hotter than the front. Now when the pie is done, the top will push up a bit. Here you can see how it lifted and cracked all around the edge. Now the hard part, letting the pie cool. Actually you can serve it warm, it'll have sort of a molten texture. Or you can serve it at room temperature or even cold. That's entirely up to you. And by the way, we'll be making mini versions of this pie and several others at this coming weekend's class on mini pies for holiday gifting and entertaining. This class is going to be a lot of fun and I hope you can join us. You'll find the link to the class below. So thanks for tuning in today. I hope you enjoy this incredible pie and we'll see you next time.